Hey, hey, BTP fans. Uh, Robbie and Dave here again. Um, and today we have some dwarves. Uh, and these guys are pretty awesome. Um, I love the way they're painted. These are some of the newer dwarf sculpts. I think there's a couple old ones too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The new sculpts are, are amazing in my opinion. Uh, they did, they elongated the bodies a little bit, which in my, I think adds a little bit of um, regalness to them essentially, like it makes them, in my opinion, a little bit uh, more dwarfy that I, that I like, the kind of dwarfs I like, more Lord of the Rings kind of dwarf. Yeah, you can kind of see it in these two slayers over here. Mm -hmm. The uh, one on the left is one of the older sculpts and still awesome and cool, Oh yes. but the, uh, the newer one on the right uh, just looks great. He's still a dwarf, he's still short and huge, um, but he's in this cool pose and um, just awesome looking. The, the fact that they, they put these uh, little bits that you can put on the base just adds to the, the figure dramatically, in my opinion, as well. Yeah. So, um, I really like these dwarfs. They're a fairly simple um, color palette. There's not too many crazy colors going on. Um, it's just you have that basic red, um, some white, black, um, the orange, and then the gold and silver colors. Um, but it all looks really good together uh, when you combine it. Um, the colors look nice together. Um, there's not too many, you know, crazy things going on. They use the blue as that contrasting color, which really stands out. Um, there's not any weird colors in here or anything, and it just overall they look really good. Keeping it simple like that can a lot of times add more than if you were trying to make it look more busy, oftentimes. So yeah, I think you did a really well job. The one thing is when doing a lot of metallics like that, you just want to make sure that you, you have a good plan in mind so that way it doesn't look like they're made of metal. Uh, you want to make sure you break it up enough. Um, and I think he had just the right amount of uh, breaking up these models with the beard, the cloth, I mean the different colors, um, but still keeping that pristine, great looking metallics that he put in there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to show you guys how to achieve that gold, um, old aged gold look. Um, it's very simple. Um, you can do it to a variety of levels. Uh, you can make gold appear quite a different many ways. Um, the way we're going to do it is try to achieve the look he had. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use the um, whole red. It's going to provide a base coat to work off of. Essentially it's going to provide um, a dark undertone so that way you're not going from black to a gold look because when you start black and you have black and gold it makes it look dirty and gross so this red is going to make it so that way it looks more just old so uh, we're going to basically uh, provide a, a very heavy flat brush onto the areas that you want to do gold trying to get as, um, as much of the black out of there as you can. Leaving a little bit's not bad, but you definitely don't want that black undertone. So, you don't necessarily need to base coat it and make sure it's all completely gone. You just wanna make sure that the majority of your undertone is this dark, deep red. I'm gonna do that to these dragons, and then I'll do it to a couple of gold coins. <laughs> Um, it can be a little tricky to achieve this gold on small areas like these coins. So you're gonna, I'm going to show you a little, a little bit of a tip, kind of a cheat, um, to make it easier for you. The, the larger the piece, obviously, the easier it is to get the transition that you want from these dark colors to the, the bright golds. So and then we'll do these little faces. Okay, so once you've achieved this step, now you're going to provide another bit of undertone. Because uh, going straight gold to red is going to make it look really, it's going to make it look a little bit off. So we use copper. Um, and you're going to do about the same technique. However, this time you want to leave some of the red in there. So, so you provide more of a transition. So um, you wet your brush, 
get the the water out. Uh, load up your brush with the the copper. Then make sure it's not glopping, and then you're gonna flat brush it on. And rem you wanna rem make sure that when you're doing metallics, that you're thinking about your light source because obviously metallics are going to be more shiny and bright where the light's gonna hit it. So, opa. So I'm gonna apply it more heavily towards the, the outer surfaces of the figure. Um, now we're gonna be adding quite a few layers, so uh, you don't have to worry about going too heavily in the first couple of layers because obviously we're just providing the base work. So there should still be some red in the crevices, like where his nose meets the back of his head. Uh, you should have some red in the very back edges, back through here. Okay. So now we've got, the, the this is the, our base. Now we can start uh, layering on the gold. And depending on how detailed you want this to look, you could, from here, go straight to a color like brass and, and call it good if, if you're just trying to get it tabletop standard real quick. But we're gonna do a more, a more deep gold. So the next one I'm gonna, the paint I'm gonna use is glorious gold, which is a, a really dark gold. And this is, this is essentially we're gonna do the same thing we did with the copper. Um, but obviously we're being more careful, putting it in places where it's, it's gonna, the gold is actually gonna shine. So um, if by chance that you do go back and you find that you've put in too much of one paint or the other, there's a couple of things you can do. One is if, any way possible, you could probably just go back and apply some of the paint you'd used before. Um, in which case you might have to go back and then re-highlight what you just did. Um, however, oftentimes you could also just provide a, use a wash. Um, using the whole red as a wash, if you water it down, provide a wash, that can help put a lot of depth back into the gold. Or you could even use a different uh, color if you chose, like purples oftentimes go good with, with uh, gold metallics once you've done them all the way up. Um, it's up to you. Um, what I just did is I put some of the the uh, copper back in. So now that we've, we've done this step, you, you can see we've got these ba this basis of gold. You can still see a lot of red, you can still see a bit of orange in there, um, but, but throughout the whole thing you've got that gold tone. So that's what we're looking for. Now these smaller pieces, um, I've tried to do the same thing, however you want to make sure that when you're doing these small areas that you want to leave most of it deep down uh, the base colors. And then as you provide more and more layers, you're just gonna use them on the top and, and kind of, um, it's almost like a gem highlighting. Uh, I'll show you more in a bit. So now that we've done this, this gold step, we're gonna use polished gold, which is gonna be the really shiny gold parts. So just as we did the other step of gold, this gold is going to be more of a highlight. So you wanna make sure that you're putting it on the, the tops, the, the edges, um, and the very highest points of the model. This is going to act as if it was the shiny, shiniest points of this gold. So as you can see, I'm just barely applying it, mostly on the edges, on the very jutting out points of the model. If you were to go in and and just use this color on everything, you'd have a really, really bright uh, model. And it wouldn't look quite realistic due to the fact that obviously um, gold isn't gonna be the same color in all, all the, uh, yeah, in every aspect all over, so especially as the gold gets old, gets a little bit weathered and or tarnished, so. So when we're doing medallions like this, you wanna make sure that 
the highlights that you put on there are higher up on the, around the edges. and or to one side, wherever the light would be reflecting from. So now as you can see, we've got a deeper or a more brighter gold, um, but we still have the, the deep reds and, and oranges um, around the edges and in the crevices and in, in deep, right? But we still have the shiny gold along the outside. So the final step that you're gonna do is you're gonna add silver. Now when you're adding this silver, you need to be very careful. The silver is going to add, be essentially the reflection of light off of the gold. <clears throat> and it may sound a little bit weird, um, but it actually brings, it brings that gold to life. So when using silver, you need to be really careful. Adding too much silver essentially makes it look comical and or uh, not realistic. So essentially you're going to edge the, the figure in silver. Actually, I'm using the wrong brush for this. You want to make sure you have a brush. that uh, can be flattened easily and used just along the, the edges and the very, the very high highlights. So when I'm doing this, it's gonna be just along like the snout. And at first you may not see any silver. That's kind of a good thing. If you can see like a lot of silver like globbed on the first time you'd like to put your paintbrush on the model, you're probably using too much. And you need to remember too is that you don't want to go crazy with the silver. You just want to put it in a few places to hint that the the gold is essentially uh, shining. So that's why I'm mostly doing it around the snout. And along the curves. Um, it's always easier, obviously, to go in and add more silver if you need to and take it away. So, once again, make sure you're very careful when applying this, this last step. Uh, one thing you can do, which you probably would want to do before you do this step, is if you, if you want to change the tone of the, like, if you don't like this deep red, you can use other colors to to essentially wash it to have a different hue of gold um, and like I mentioned earlier purple is a great color to use on gold um, to essentially make it look a little bit more old and weathered so uh, and like I said when you're doing these gems you want to make sure that you go the same way because I, I did it dark here then I highlighted it like the majority of it like a gem and then when I did the highest gold I just kind of did this edge right here and now that I'm doing silver it's just along the edges right there so it's essentially kind of like a gem where you go from dark from dark to light I'm gonna do this edge the other way okay a little bit more so essentially that's that's what you kind of want your gold to look like. You want it to be dark essentially from the back and then always going to the light. Um, it's a very simple technique and a lot of times uh, it can bring life to an otherwise dull piece, especially when you have a lot of metallics. Um, being able to do different types of gold like this um, help when breaking up a model especially if it's dwarves who have a lot of metallics. So hopefully this helped you guys. Um, if you need, want to see any more different tips or tricks, just let us know. Um, have a good one.